Hi, I'm Faith, but you might as well call me Honey Splash, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will explain an art concept in 15 minutes. This concept is the artist's inspiration. Inspiration could come from anywhere, so I hope you're inspired by what I'm about to say to help you create your own work. In my childhood, I was kind of lonely because I was so weird that not many kids wanted to hang out with me. Over time, I became very inventive of creative worlds and storytelling. I wasn't very good at it, but it was something important to me. For example, when I was six, I would watch Lion King on repeat. And I would set up the couch cushions to look like Pride Rock, and uh, I would sing all the songs. And to this day, I kind of know most of it by heart, but um, not as well as I did when I was six. So when I was six, I had a much better memory of every single detail of The Lion King. My driving factor was because I was lonely and I had nothing else to do, so being creative was all I got. So what I have here, <laughs> What I have here is my very first sketchbook, as you can see. Um, it has a little uh, crest on it. It's just a sticker. It's it, oh my gosh, this thing's got dust on it. <laughs> as you see, I started off drawing like mythical creatures, and these, this one in particular, being one of my first drawings ever, um, was inspired by um, Stephanie Law's um, Dreamscapes, Myth and Magic. She is an incredible watercolorist and she's a huge inspiration and she kind of was one of the reasons why I got into drawing because I, I'm not quite sure, I sort of saw art as a way to, to get some of the creative worlds and stuff and all that, was built, that I was building onto paper, onto something that has a physical representation in this world. Um, and another book that wasn't very important to me is William Connor's Dracopedia, and it's called Guide to Drawing Dragons of the World. And yeah, it's it's a gorgeous book. And it's even though it's for digital, I realized that the first pages he talks about um, doing studies in sketchbooks, and that was huge to me. So I I first started with you know, doing doing sketchbook studies. So I would say, in a way, those artworks began my artistic endeavors. And one of the other things that was a huge inspiration to me was um, books, because I it was another way to express my creative imagination. So one of the books series that I got obsessed with was Warriors. <laughs> It's a series about um, cats that live in this civilization. So each of the cats are separated by clans, which is like um, the difference between cultural and spiritual beliefs within the cats. So um, different groups believe different things. So it's kind of like a, a view on politics. And this sort of got me into the, the works of animal symbolism within artwork. So that is why this is so inspiring for me. Not only was the story is fantastical, which as you'll see, um, fantasy is a huge thing for me. So that, that this was the, one of the beginnings of the subject matter for my work, for sure. And it was also the beginnings of um, being able to find other weird creatives in the world. Um, so I actually drew a lot of my own original characters that were warriors. In fact, half of this book Oh my gosh. Half of it was like, you know, dragons, and then the rest, uh, the rest were cats. In fact, I drew, I drew a lot of cats. Oh. Oh. For graduation of my eighth grade year, I drew every single student in that class uh, a cat. And that was them as a cat. Every single, I think we, we didn't have a lot of students in our graduating class. I went to a Catholic school, so it was like, uh, 24 students I think at most so it wasn't that big of a deal, but I remember spending all night drawing them. Here we go. I found it. So this is the first iteration of Honey Splash So I came up with five different clans and she was part of tree clan and their whole gimmick was that they could climb trees real well <laughs> So it wasn't yeah, exactly. It was then in seventh grade. I started feeling so passionate towards making artwork and this was a way to express myself and I was kind of using it as both an emotional crutch and a creative crutch so this was a way to express myself both emotionally and mentally and that sort of thing and then eventually in when I was graduating eighth grade so ready to become a high schooler 
I was touring the school that my parents wanted me to go to um, after um, grade school and I was disappointed to find that the art they had there was kind of elementary at best. It was, they, they weren't taking art seriously. And I knew that there, if I really wanted to pursue my art, I wanted something different. But I didn't know how to describe it and I was pretty sure that the best I was gonna get was the school. Um, so we looked in the local area and didn't find a whole lot. And eventually my dad found a school called the Lehigh Valley Charter High School for the Arts. And that school, getting accepted into that school, because even though it is a high school, you had to be accepted, you had to make a portfolio, and you had to do an interview, and that interview was, to this day, was one of the most stressful moments in my life, because I was, was I 13? I was 13, and I was like freaking out, because I've never, I never did any interviews in my entire life. Everything that I know, to this day, has started with those foundations that I learned back in LBCA. And if you stick around, I'm gonna reteach them to you. So probably one of these 15 minutes episodes. Freshman year was a, was a big deal for me. I was kind of shell-shocked. I um, didn't know what to think. I was being introduced to people that were just as weird as me. For the first time, I met friends that I was actually going to stick around with for the rest of my life up until this point, so we're still sticking good. One of the most inspiring teachers at LVCA was Mr. H. And we're just gonna call him Mr. H for the remainder of the video. Um, he was a very strict man, <laughs> but he was very compassionate about teaching us what's important about art. But he had a funny way of being both um, demanding and understanding. Freshman year, Mr. H suggested to me that I started working in watercolor, which was a huge surprise for me because up to that point, I started working in color pencil. I wanted color pencil to be my medium. I thought I was gonna do color pencil for the rest of my life. I was so happy with color pencil and he showed me watercolor and he said you can basically do what you do in color pencil just so much faster and so much nicer and sure enough he proved me right um, after much training and going back to Stephanie Law for her instructions in watercolor in the book that I adored so much as a child. But I didn't know where to start because even though Mr. H said, hey, you should work in watercolor, and I had Stephanie Law there to guide me through her book, I really wanted that face-to-face -face interaction that I was getting with um, LVCA. So I decided to look into uh, a place, um, a artist place near where I live called Goggle Works. This, this painting actually comes with a story, and I don't know if I should really say this, but I'm going to anyways. Um, there was an artist I really, really liked at the Goggle Works. I toured there a couple times, and I asked him, would it be possible if he was taking apprenticeships or would do some tutoring of some sort? And he rejected me flat out, saying something along the lines of, no one my age could possibly have the skill required to um, meet his standards. And he didn't even look at my work. <laughs> Devastated, I finished this piece. <laughs> I actually took it to a different artist that worked there, whose work I found technically masterful, but wasn't so thrilled about his subject matter. And uh, when asked to James Marie, who, by the way, is an awesome individual, and there's actually an interview with him on my channel from the Goggle Works. You should check it out. I think it's still decent. I can't remember if it's bad. I'm so sorry. Don't watch it. James Marie helped me with this painting. I was like midway through, and I didn't know where to go with some of the watercolor techniques. And he sort of took me under his tutelage, and and taught me everything I needed to know about watercolors. But now let me talk about another huge inspiration for me, and that is artists that are in the art history canon. Three main artists that I, to this day, go back to look at their work and go to museums to see them and just am enamored by completely. Salvador Dali, Frida Kahlo, and Thomas Cole. I love them. <laughs> Salvador Dali um, was a surrealist. 
His personality and mentality was just as interesting to me as his artwork. He used his understanding of dreams and the subconscious as well as his personal trauma and memories to influence his artwork. He used symbols to represent complex ideas and played a lot with juxtaposition. Symbols and juxtaposition are two things I like to do in my own artwork. Um, so he is a huge inspiration for me. Free Call was another surrealist. She was from Mexico. And I would say that she was really good at understanding how to use art as therapy. She had a lot of traumatic things happen to her at a young age. She overcame that with her strong-willed personality and her ability to um, use art as an expressive medium. So her art was both, the way of painting was both therapeutic, the message that she spoke through her paintings was also therapeutic for her. Thomas Cole was part of the Hudson River School, which was a group of artists that were known for painting scenes of nature and also scenes that were kind of fantasy. So Thomas Cole in particular did some fantasy scenes that were out of this world. His whole um, Journey of Life series, for example, is um, definitely out of this world artwork. The way he handled nature was something called the sublime. And the sublime is a sort of romantic idea and romantic as in big, big R um, art movement. Anything that wanted to be dramatic had to be more dramatic. And it was this idea that of the sublime, that nature is the majesty of everything that we could ever imagine. And it's so beautiful and so romantic. Here is the art of getting lost in the moment. So what else could you be left to be inspired by? And I would say your fellow peers. So one of the things that it was a huge inspiration for me was online art communities. So I started to watch a lot of YouTube artists, especially YouTube animators. Circling back to Warrior Cats, there is an entire community of Warrior Cat animators that still persists, improves, and grows larger to this day. Um, so now I'm going to talk about particular animators that were inspirations for me. And one of them was by the name of Finchwing. I think she prefers to go by her screen name. Um, and she was a huge inspiration because her artwork was in the Warriors community for a long time. And it was just seeing her style and her work grow as an artist alongside of me growing as an artist was very inspirational. Um, there's also other animators that inspire me that aren't on YouTube, and that goes then that's Don Bluth, Rebecca Sugar, and Richard Williams. Don Bluth is known for his own particular style and ambition to defend his concept and ideas even against Disney. Richard Williams is a technical master in his book, The Survival, An the Animated Survival Kit was the major information resource to help me begin to understand concept of animations. Rebecca Schrager is well known for their creative hit animated show, Steven Universe. Their skill to organize creative individuals and produce such an interesting story with appealing visuals has inspired me to pursue my own work with others. And now I talk about some serious inspiration that has also changed my life. Senior year of high school, which was three years ago now, I had a psychotic episode that landed me in a mental hospital. And it was a life-changing event that meant that I was never going to be the same. But that's okay. I took my inspirations um, from previously to the hospital and where I am now, and I was able to also talk about what it means to have mental health issues and to this day I still use artwork as therapy. Artwork is very important to me. It is a way to express um, some inner thoughts and turmoil I'm going through even if it's not the same as what other people go through um, it's still a big deal. So even if it was um, a low point in my life it allowed me to get a deeper understanding of myself. And I do struggle with mental health issues to this day, but I'm working through it and art is helping me. You know, there's no end of wealth of information you can find out there relating to art. And if you think you can't do it, you can, I believe in you. <laughs> if I can go from drawing a bunch of cats to drawing more cats, now that I think about it, all I've ever been drawing is cats, <laughs> then you can do anything, I promise you. So that has been uh, my multiple points, my 50 minute 
15 minute talk about my own personal inspiration. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please like and subscribe if you like and would like to subscribe. And um, stay tuned for more videos of 15 minutes in length and um, understanding different art principles and a little bit about me and as an artist who is working and trying to make things. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye.